guys. Welcome to Better Bachelor. My name is Joker with a face for radio and a voice for print. Coming to you live from the Bachelor Cave late at night. Um, a very busy day today. Didn't get a chance to record this during the day. And you can see I have a, a whole two lamps in this very big building. <laughs> Um, it's still getting everything set up. I, my shower today was buckets of, buckets of rainwater over my head in 60 degrees while it was raining outside. It was very cold, still warmer than my baths in Iceland, but very cold. Um, men, uh, the Muslim and Christian men have had enough. Um, this is an interesting story, uh, coming from the post millennial and it, and it ha it's happening in two different areas of the country that are actually quite left leaning. And it seems that the, the Alphabet Coalition, the LDHD TV community, trying to push all this nonsense in the schools is starting to get uh, Armenian, uh, Hispanic, and other Christians very ticked off. And uh, not only are the moms showing up to uh, throw shouts at the school boards, but men are showing up to throw fisticuffs at uh, the opposing um, trans Tifa. <laughs> That's what they're, because if you notice, anything that the left wants, uh, these trans Tifas show up and, uh, and, and play armed guards. And of course, they're doing it for, for the, uh, the, the newest Rainbow Coalition. So breaking from uh, post-millennial, um, fights between uh, trans Tifa and parents erupts in Glendale, California outside a school board meeting over the LGHD TV uh, pride agenda. Uh, one of the trans Tifa attacked an Armenian man and the man fought back, a parent on the scene said. Not just him, but what was interesting is that a lot of uh, men jumped in uh, to get into it, to get into the dust up. And, and I don't know between you and me, if we're laying money down on, on if we're taking you know, bets on this thing, I'm going with the Armenians on this one versus the Rainbow Coalition. Uh, they say an all-out brawl between and, uh, Trans Tifa, and I'm going to keep calling them that too because uh, it's very it's very obvious they're in with the Rainbow Coalition and everybody else on the left. Uh, an all-out brawl between Trans Tifa and parents erupted outside a Glendale, California school board meeting on Tuesday. Parents had attended the meeting in, to demand transparency of curriculum, which the Glen, Glendale school board has refused to provide. Now, let me, just, let, let me just be honest about this here. If parents show up and they say, what are you teaching our kids? And the school board says, stuff it, we're not telling you. You betcha there's going to be some, some really pissed off parents. Um, I'm surprised it hasn't gotten worse before this. But, but to be honest, a lot of people are kind of normies. Uh, you know, they're the, they're the Fox News and the CNN and the MSNBC news viewers, and they're not the ones trolling on the internet like we have been. And I think that's why a lot of boycotts haven't worked, because a lot of people have just kind of been in the dark about this, and then all of a sudden, they're saying, what in the heck is going on at these schools? I apologize, by the way, that I'm so dark. There's not much I can do about it. But I tried to make it interesting with a little white, a little yellow imbalance, so I don't look like a, a supervillain in a movie. <laughs> A uh, Glendale mom who was inside the meeting told the Post Millennial that the school board refused to engage with parents, and instead of dealing with parents and giving the information parents have rightly demanded, they paraded a, section, a selection of uninformed local elected officials who had no idea what was going on or even what the issues were. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna, to uh, make sure this is muted, uh, but you can see here, they get into dust-ups, and the men are out there in the front line, and the men are saying, okay, while they're in there throwing words, we're going to be out here throwing some fists. And the cops come in, and again, this all started because somebody of the Rainbow Coalition decided to attack one of the Armenian men. And I'll tell you right now, the silent majority is that they're the, these type of men are the ones they'll sit quietly, they'll put up with crap, they put up with it, they put up with it, and then they hit their point, their breaking point. And when they hit that breaking point, it's game over. Like it's too late for you now. You push too far, and, and now you hit a good, normal, average, everyday man to his breaking point, and he's going to crack on you like a whip. And I, I think this is very important. I, I don't. Jordan Peter, Peterson once said it, and, and I don't know if I'm getting this quote quite right, 
But he said something like, you know, you, you must always be a dangerous man. No one fears a non-dangerous man. You must be a dangerous man, but a good man keeps that in check. And he keeps it under reins, and he uses it for good. I think these guys are starting to hit their breaking point, and they're saying, look, I've had enough of you messing with my kids and my family, and, and now my wife's mad, <laughs> and I've had enough. Um, <clears throat> and, and this is kind of, kind of more of the same stuff here. Uh, Ar Armenian, Hispanic, and Christian families have been protesting the Glendale School Board's uh, pride celebrations and the indoctrination of their children into the, the gender ideology. Parents were there protesting, trying to work with Glendale Unified as to what was being taught, and a mother who was inside the meeting filmed parents protesting. More of the same. And then they say there's basically there's some so-called trans-tifa or hoodlums, antisocial folks who were here, 20 or 30 folks, who separated themselves with the LDHD TV protesters, <clears throat> and then they moved away and went into a parking lot. They met a group of Armenian men, one of the uh, Trans-Tifa attacked the Armenian man, and the men fought back. Now, what's interesting, again, is Glendale's pretty left-leaning here. You know, you're in the heart of, of California, and now you've got, you know, Christian men, um, uh, Latino men, I think that's what they said, like Hispanic men, and you've got Armenian men. And the other thing is this isn't like exactly a, this doesn't fly very big in the, in the black community. I think when the left chose their, you know, they're trying to become a, a tribe of LDHD TV and minorities, and they're trying to put everybody under one roof. And I think they made the, the, the roof a little too multicolored and big uh, for the LDHD TV community. And they're starting to push back now. And I think they're going to lose, you know, they're going to lose a lot of the minority voters that traditionally vote Democrat. And it, this isn't about the politics of it, but what it is is that we're, we're really getting to a point now where I think a lot of people are going to be fighting a lot of other people. And, and this is, I, again, what I think the upper ups, you know, want for us so that we don't pay attention to what they're doing, like the debt ceiling and all the other problems that we've got going on in the country right now, you know the conflict between Ukraine and Russia, the debt ceiling, <clears throat> even though that's passed, it's pretty much unlimited now until January 2025. So we'll have another four or five billion going on there. The bankruptcy of, of the economy, the, in, uh, the inflation rates, cost of food, cost of fuel. I, I think this is all a distraction. But I think it's an important one because it's still a battle we have to fight because this is part of the culture war. Um, now, here's the other thing. So that was in kind of left-leaning Glendale, California. Well, now you see this headline here, and you'd think, well, dude, you just read this story. Why are you reading it again? Muslim Christian parents unite to protect the LG LDHD TV curriculum at their uh, kids' schools, or to protest, excuse me. And this is outside of Montgomery County Public Schools in Mar Maryland uh, on Tuesday. And they're pushing back in Maryland as well. So here we've got another, another groups that are saying, you know what? Originally, these parents, it, it wasn't that they were uh, wanting to see what the curriculum was. They found out what the curriculum was going to be, and they said, we're opting out. We do not want to send our kids to this. They said the protest against the new policy was organized by Family Rights for free, uh, Religious Freedom and Moms for Liberty. Counter protesters showed up to the event as well to show support for the policy, according to Newsweek. The opt-out policy originally allowed parents to choose whether or not they wanted their kids to learn this stuff, uh, the Daily Caller News Foundation previously reported. These protests come amidst multiple lawsuits from parents against MCPS for the policy disallowing opt-outs. The lawsuit alleges the policy is a, vi is a violation of the First Amendment. The school board allowed 30 members from each side to protest, enter the school building uh, board meeting where things got heated. One protester and former MCPS student uh, against the policy can be heard in a video from independent journalist Ford Fisher saying freedom of religion is a fundamental human right. Now, here's what's interesting, right? You see that the one of the groups is Moms for Liberty. Well, the the I think it was the S... Uh, uh, Southern Poverty Law Center, SPLC, I think that's who it is, um, they just decided to mark Moms for Liberty as a Terry cloth, <clears throat> Terry, Terry cloth, <clears throat> uh, group. 
that they, that they're, they're calling them, you know, adding. They, they're saying we're specifically adding this to a group of people uh, that are the white supremes and other people like it. The moms for liberty. So if you just say, hey, I don't want my kid being uh, taught this stuff or fed this stuff in the schools, they're they're getting added to lists now, and. Again, the it, it sounds an awful lot like both the men and the women are filing, you know, the mothers and fathers are filing the lawsuits, are pushing back and taking the legal route. But in some of these areas, the men are standing out front. And when these counter groups come up here uh, to push back, the men are out there cracking knuck knuckles and dusting, dusting faces with, with their hands. And they're fighting back physically. I, I think this is going to grow more and more heated. I, I don't know where this ends, but I think the quiet majority, the, 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 the men that usually it's mothers that take care of the kids, usually it's mothers that are paying attention to what's going on in the school boards, and I think dad has heard what's going on, and now dads are saying, no more. This is going to end, whether it's by the court system, by protesting and showing up, but they're going to protect their families, they're going to protect what's going on, and it has to be done as a group. If you were just one or two men standing out there, one or two, you know, lawsuits out there, it will get brushed aside because, it, you know, right now it is a, it is a populism or a populist vote. Like you need numbers and you need a lot of people to push back against this stuff. And apparently it's going to be both physical and by lawsuits. And I think the quiet men have said, that's it, no more. And the same thing is what's happening in, in with Budweiser. Again, the vast majority of, of Bud Light drinkers were men. Um, it's happening now in Target. These are, again, mothers and uh, maybe the silent, quiet types that are finally finding out what's going on. And this is going to hit a boiling point. I think things, you know, I've, I've said multiple times, we've got some, you know, soft, soft people in charge. There's a whole lot of women in charge of things that have no idea how things are working. And I'm not just saying that to be like a, a, a jerk, there are a lot of people by this, this current administration that have elected people on their immutable characteristics, such as their skin color or their gender or their whatever, and putting them in places of power, and they have no idea what's going on. And you're quickly seeing what happens when people have no idea what's going on. Things start falling apart quickly. So as things continue to decline, those bad times are coming from those weak, weak men and weak women and only when we hit bottom do, do we have a reverse. And that's accelerationism. How quick do we get down to the, the bottom of the barrel before things start turning around? It's one of the, the big reasons why I accelerated myself moving out here on my land. And because of the permitting, I can only have one home being built at a time on a piece of land. And, and if I have more than that, I wouldn't fall under z certain zoning of agriculture, which is what I'd like to be zoned for tax purposes out here. So because of that, in this building, I can't run septic. I can't have a well. I can't have electricity framed and built onto the building because then I would have to pass an inspection as if it was a home. And I've already got another house being built, which is going to be my full-time home, and I'll make this into my studio and my garage. And so how do, I, how do you like circumvent it? I, I do that by gathering rainwater instead of a well and having a compost toilet. Uh, instead of a septic system, and by um, using batteries in a small solar kit uh, that has been put together instead of attaching anything to the frame that's on wheels, and I can wheel it out into the uh, out of the garage if I wanted to. So everything in, in here is temporary. But it's one of the reasons why I pushed to make this happen within a matter of months, because now I can store a couple of years of food out here, and if things get really wonky and weird, uh, and we get enough bad people in power where things get really, really weird, I can sleep well at night knowing I've at least got a roof over my head and I'll put a little wood stove in here so I can survive the winter. And uh, even if my showers are just du dumping buckets of rainwater and well water uh, over my head to, to stay clean, I'm fine with that. I like roughing it a little bit. I like the challenge. Um, but and, and not everybody can do that. But I'm just telling you my path of what helps me sleep well at night. I think things are going to get weird as all hell in the next year, you know year or two, and then depending on what happens with the voting and the you know the next the next batch the next go around for who's going to be president and vice president and the rest of that, if there's some weird stuff going on with that, it's going to get even worse.
it's going to get even worse. And man, it's going to be some crazy times. But at least now people are waking up. And I think more and more, specifically men, I think women have been a little bit more aware of what's going on in school. But I think the men are saying, hey, we're not doing this. And I think they're stepping up and pushing back now, both both uh, legally and, and physically. So we'll see where it where it goes, but it's kind of an interesting story to keep your eyes on, and we'll see how the pushbacks go, and we'll go from there. Guys, I'll leave it there. Um, thanks again if you're a supporter over at betterbachelor.locals.com. It really helps me. It's, it is it is now literally cheaper than just a single cheeseburger. Like if you go to any of these fast food joints and just buy a burger, not the fries, not the Coke, being a supporter of me is now cheaper than that. I'm like half the price of a, a cup of Starbucks coffee now. So please become a supporter today. It would really help me. Keeps me independent so I don't have to read ads by, I don't know, some of these janky game companies and all this other stuff and, and uh, help support me while I slowly build my empire out in the middle of the woods. All right, guys, we'll leave it there. We'll see you in the next one.